Log Talk Radio. Blade, how's everybody doing? Good. Mm-hmm. And also, we have a couple other additions for this special episode. We have Saltine joining us. How you doing, Saltine? Hey, what's up, everyone? Hey, guys, how you doing? Doing well. And also, we have a co-correspondent. Of course, you know him. He spits out his rage, Tove. How you feeling, Tove? Yeah, you know, just chilling. You know how uh, DLC is. So uh, sometimes it takes a while to download. Sometimes it takes two seconds. So this is a quick day yeah. DLC today. Yeah. All right. And, uh, you know, if you be using that Sony product, which I you know NFC Game Boy hates, it takes forever for you to download and up, uh, update your games. We'll leave that alone. But today's title is called Wednesday Night War, DLC Episode 3. Keep in note, today is Thursday. But it's the reason why we call it the Wednesday Night Wars Because we'll be covering this whole episode The breaking news that came about yesterday The fact that Ring of Honor Will be debuting on Destination America Next week on Wednesday nights The reason why this is big news, folks Is because Destination America also Is airing TNA Impact Don't forget Destination America came out publicly and stated that they will be canceling Impact from their programming in September. To add on to this big news is that not only will you have Ring of Honor starting next Wednesday coming on Destination America, not only will you have TNA Impact coming on Destination America the same night, you also have NXT, which airs on Wednesdays, and you also have Leecher Underground, Shin Blade's favorite and our favorite, their shows on Wednesday nights on El Rey Network. So now you have four shows, four wrestling companies, if you will, airing the same night. This is why this is called the Wednesday Night Wars. So we're saying that. Coming up, we will have our great buddy, of course, co-host of P for Wrestling Report, good old buddy David Hero, will be joining us later on in the episode. We may have a couple surprise guests as we speak, um, a couple of publicists and a couple of other guys, um, May not be able to call in, but people has been sending me um, emails and sending me tweets, sending me messages about their take on this happening. So with that being said, you can follow Under the Mat Radio on Twitter at tech underscore UTMR. You can follow NSC Game Boy on Twitter at NSC Game Boy. Spelled correctly. Please yeah, please spell correctly. You can follow Shin Blade on Twitter at at Sensational One on Twitter. Yeah, mm-hmm. on Twitter. You can follow Saltine. Uh, tell everybody how to follow you on Twitter. All right, you can find me on Twitter at MoneyMaker E H. Yes, MoneyMaker E H. And of course, Tof, how do we follow you on Twitter? Hey, you can follow me at Tof at Tof Knows Best. Yes, Tof does know best. So don't forget, follow us on Facebook, our like page, Under the Mat Radio. NFC Game Boy, you can let them know what you say about the thumbs. Oh, of course, we we need all the thumbs we can. You know, we, we gotta turn them thumbs blue. So please make sure you donate your thumbs. You know, kids, you know, adults, old people, aliens, whatever. We need your thumbs. We appreciate yes. your support. Hey, everybody, Homo sapiens. Hey, everybody, donate the thumbs. Make the thumbs turn blue. Don't forget about our group page. Of course, same name under the mat radio. Thank you much for everybody that supports it. 
On YouTube, follow us on Under the Mats Radio. Follow our YouTube channel. Our YouTube channel is growing. And don't forget uh, the Shy Blogs with Shimblade. Um, Shimblade's project that he does for the show. Don't forget to follow us on Instagram, Under the Mats Radio, all one word. If you need to email us about any questions or business inquiries, email us at under the mats radio at gmail dot com. Don't forget our Indiegogo page as well. That's also up and going around. Of course we have a fundraiser for everybody to keep supporting the show so our show can continue to grow. We can continue to provide you with the best content and even better content for you the fans because this show is for you. Am I mm-hmm. missing anything, guys? Any uh, any quick announcements or social media that I'm missing? Man, let's get mm-hmm. into it, man. Yeah, let's oh, yeah. get into it. Now, uh, of course, I'm going to start it off differently. I'm going to turn it over to Toph because, Toph, brother, you had the idea. You hit me up yesterday. Say, said, look, we got to do a show. This is huge news. Toph, give me your thoughts. Let everybody know why this is so important and significant in the world of wrestling. Um, when I first saw it, like many people, I thought it was a joke. Uh, I was working yesterday and I had to get called in. Uh, you know how it is when you understaffed and stuff. I came back home around like, I want to say three o'clock, logged on Facebook. First thing I see is a picture of Jay Lethal and the Briscoes next to Destination America. I'm like, is this kayfabe? You know, like kayfabe news article, you know how they always do the joke articles. So I thought it was a joke. Right. I was like, this can't be real. Then I, I clicked on it, and I was like, wait, this is, this looks legit. Then I go to Destination America, and they changed their cover photo. And, you know, all these other stories start picking it up. And I'm like, what? What? And, like, the realization just starts sinking in. Uh, this is unheard of because um, you got a cable station showing two different wrestling promotions, which is extremely rare and very uncommon. We even get that during the Monday Night Wars. Um you got Destination America now showing Ring of Honor in TNA. And, you know, this is a big step for Ring of Honor, especially. Ring of Honor has been on the Sinclair Network for a while. They come on the different CW syndicate stations. So now, uh, and, and the thing is, Ring of Honor, they're still going to be airing on those stations. So Destination America is just a simple way for them to increase their, their, their range with fans. So the fans that could have Ring of Honor, wherever you guys are, you guys will still have that. But now fans that don't have those stations will now be able to see Destination America on Ring of Honor. So now Ring of Honor, they're basically going to be going into about, I want to say, 5 million new homes completely increasing their range. So more people can now potentially see Ring of Honor than they can see TNA now, which really makes you wonder who's the true number two brand out there. And then you have NXT, and the reason people say, well, NXT is a developmental brand. It's it's part of WWE, but the reason why fans consider it a different brand is because it's so different. The fan base is different. The product is so different. Then you have Lucha Underground on the LRA Network, which is – Definitely, in my opinion, that's the most consistent wrestling program on television today. I love Lucha Underground. So I guess what I'm really trying to say is for so many years, we all know that WWE is number one, and it will stay number one until it's challenged by another company. But, you know, TNA has always jokingly been referred to as as number two. But now, for the first time, really since the demise of WCW, we really have a legitimate war for number two. We got TNA, Ring of Honor, Lucha, NXT, and don't forget, we still haven't seen Global Force Wrestling, so who knows what Jeff Jarrett's going to do. And he's still got New Japan Pro Wrestling, which is going to make cameos through Ring of Honor and Global Force. So we actually, this is a legitimate war for number two. This is a very big deal. Uh, I'm not going to say this is a, uh, the next big boom, I'm not going to say that because, you know, when you have a boom period, that's when wrestling goes mainstream. But what I will say is this is the most interest that I've seen in wrestling since, like, like 2005. Also, let's not forget about Tommy Dreamer's House of Hardcore, which will be debuting soon on um, TV as well. Mm-hmm. So that's a, lot, that's a lot of wrestling going on. Definitely is. All right, so Toph, you gave your point. I'm going to turn it over to the boy, NSC Game Boy, give you a point. And after that, I'm going to give it to Saltine and then Toph. 
Well, just to uh, to clarify even more, because I think Kofi pretty much hit everything on his head. Um, as a wrestling fan, you're really looking at from a, span, a standpoint where it's, you're kind of in disbelief because, like you said, it's, it's never been heard of before. Really, you know, if you go back into the territory days and stuff, you know, maybe local channels and stuff might show, you know, to different territories and stuff. But now you have Ring of Honor, which has been doing very well in the last few years, and TNA, which has been kind of suffering in the last two years, on the same station around the same time frame. And this is almost like a win-win for Destination America because now you have these two rival wrestling organizations trying to compete to get their brand out there. Sinclair still backs Ring of Honor, so they still want to be on the uh, Sinclair stations and everything. And now, even that, you know, with New Japan having their wrestlers, you know, come in and stuff, really, I think this is a win-win for all wrestling fans. Um, TNA actually can uh, attest to some of this because it can help some of that fan base. With people watching Ring of Honor, they can might tune in to TNA and, and compare the show, give ideas, you know, go to the sites, go to tweets, find out what problems they may be having and stuff. I think the only person right here who probably should be somewhat worried, honestly, <laughs> is the stockholders at WWE. Because when you are on top, and I said this Tuesday on the show, when you're on top like that and you have these entities that are starting to blossom, you know, this is the start of the snowball going down the, the, the hill. You know, it's, it's going to get bigger and bigger. And with all these, uh, like a global force, uh, Lucha doing well, you know, well, great numbers. With, with with the brand keep expanding and expanding, and, you know, think about it, a year from now, you know, who's going to be still standing, you know, as as number two. You know, of course, Day Day E is going to have the number one for a while. But, you know, as time goes on, you know, they might try to, to buy out. You know, Vince and them might try to go and buy out these companies again because, you know, uh, any competition is always good business. So I think the stockholders is just a little worried because they don't know what to expect. And as wrestling fans, I think we already know what to expect. We just kind of in disbelief that it's happening because we've been waiting for it for so long. So um, that's my uh, okay. that's my synopsis on it. Tennessee, <laughs> Tennessee thoughts. Yes. Yeah. All right. Next, we'll turn over to Sartine. Real quick, brother, All right. what are your thoughts on this? Well, I'm happy for the Wednesday Night Wars coming up next Wednesday. I'm proud of everyone involved in it. We have Ring of Honor, TNA Impact, NXT, and Lucha Underground. I actually cry happy for this. You know, we all did in our minds, like, yeah, this is coming back. So great last night on one night, and people won't even think of Monday nights because, you know, Raw been lacklusting lately, and we want something exciting to happen. They'd be worried about, oh, let's wait for Wednesday. But, you know, that's the time to watch wrestling. And when I saw Ring of Honor was announced last, um, was it yesterday, I would say, like midday, yo, I went Chris Tucker happy. I was screaming like, I'm like, oh, my God. <laughs> so, you but know. You it at the most on. Team. <laughs> so, I've been looking for this. Do you remember how WCW went this band back in 2001? It was like, that was a sad day for wrestling, but even better for, I guess, you would say WWE at the time. And you now have to wonder what is the top show of the night. So that's going to be like, oh, shit, what's going to happen? And it's exciting for me and for all of us on the show. And probably with all the talents involved, you have to wonder they have to upgrade themselves on each show. And I believe we got to see, we have to wonder if they're going to switch up shows again. You remember how WCW and WWE had that war going on? So that might be interesting. And will team they will rise up to the occasion because they could be canceled and like the um higher ups could change their mind on it. And that could be an exciting point to it too. But okay. team they have time to get back on their feet until September and people can change their mind, you know. So team they might right. have to work harder on their um show. And as far as WWE, they really have to keep their eyes open because, you know, hey, they might have to work harder on their talent and, you know, their show, too. So it's a sight for all of us. I'm really happy. All right. Next, of course, uh, Shin. 
Sensational one. Go to give you a quick thoughts. Well, um, I I can really say though that uh, this is an excellent time. Just like uh, Tofa said, this is the battle number two this year. Um, it's just a it's just a lot. Is is um, really like an explosion of sorts of people to see uh, in wrestling. And personally, I think I think it was a great time to to show that. Uh, not only you get one at night, but you get about three more. So I have asked this question online, and I want fans to listen to me as I say this because I've gotten all the wrong answers except for one. And um, I'm going to ask you fans this, and I hope you call in. Out of all four shows, I have asked which one would you be more dedicated to watch and what are the other three that you would DVR? So what is your most dedicated product that you would watch to uh down to the least favorite that you that you'll uh end up uh watching? And I got a lot of wrong answers online. People were telling me like TNA and ROH are on the same channel. And just like what Tech says, all oh, shut your mouth. Um I'm talking about as far as loyalty and fan base. Like what would you run home to go see? And what's the other ones that you were like, uh, I'll just DVR it later or I'll watch on the network later. So um, that's the question that I'm asking the people, and I really hope that uh, they call in and give the answer to that one. Um, I, I think this is a great, great uh, year for wrestling. As, as Toph and I said on another show, uh, indie wrestling, this is the battle for number two. So as in the great referee Mills Lane, let's get it on. No. Thank you all guys for your thoughts. Um of course I gotta get my thought, my 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 technical analysis of it is um you know, all of these shows coming on is good. You know, you got Lucha Underground, uh, you know, of course T and A, you now you got R H and NXT, then of course, you know, we got Global Force, you know, making a rise, House of Hardcore, which comes on Fight Network. It's very it's very good that we have so many choices now. But what I would love to see is that I hope that each company gives something different to the fan base. As NFC Game Boy says, we don't want no WWE juniors. TNA should be different from WWE. What worked during the Monday Night Wars when it was WCW and WWE, they were two totally different shows. They looked totally different, they felt different, the segments were different, you know, everything was just different. So, I hope that Lucia already has a different feel and look. TNA, is starting to get there. Ring of Honor, hopefully they don't change their formula now that they're on national TV. NXT, there's NXT. So, I just hope that as fans of wrestling as we all are, this could be just a plethora of Wrestling for us That we get to have a difference And we get to see a difference And have a choice Thank gosh this is the technology we live in Because we have DVR and YouTube And we can record shows Because you can't watch everything all at once So um, Here's a question for you all And I'll have NFC Game Boy start with this It's like Shin said Out of all the shows Who do you think Will have the upper hand what would you, what, out of all of the shows that's coming on, start next week, NFC Gay Boy, what's the one show that you feel more excited to watch than the other? Um, as far as having the upper hand, um, well, I'll, I'll break the question down. I, I, as far as me exciting, I would say, of course, Ring of Honor. Um, as far as the upper hand, um, that's pretty much yet to be determined. Um, because... You know, Ring of Honor is already on syndicated television and going to Destination America. There's still a lot of people that don't have Destination America. You know, it's not shown in a lot of places. Even though, yes, it's going to cable television, don't get me wrong, it is going into a lot of homes. But there are many, 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 many more homes that it's not going to be shown in. So right now, I can't really say what company I think will have the, the edge. You know, NXT is its own entity. 
you know, of course, if, if I had to call anything Day Day Junior, I would call it their pay per views or SmackDown or something. Because, you know, I think that's Day Day Junior half the time. Um, Lucha, of course, mm-hmm. great product. Um, you know, TNA struggling but trying to survive. And, of course, you know, Ring of Honor coming to the fry where it's already been there, but, you know, now it's on uh, um, a more syndicated programming uh, or station, excuse me. I really can't tell you who I think. Um, like I said, it hasn't been done yet. It hasn't been seen yet. So, you know, Wednesday haven't mm-hmm. came. But if I had to take a guess, I will also have to say Ring of Honor only because with the – the, the the shows the, um, that they've been having in the last few weeks, of course, that us under the mat has been attending and seeing right. the product. You know, I had more fun at that Ring of Honor show than I did at WrestleMania. You know, it was, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and yeah, I mean, and it was much much cheaper than me paying to go to WrestleMania. So you know, as a wrestling fan, I will have to give it to Ring of Honor, but it's yet to be determined. Back to you, Jack. All right. All right. Go ahead, Shane Blade. Give your thoughts. Uh, I, you know what? Ultimately, I agree with NEC Game Boy in this one, and I will break it down myself. Um, when you when you go through the all four, number one, people people are going to not watch NXT despite WWE. Now, NXT is is, is a developmental brand, and but at the end of the day, it's WWE. So people are not going to watch it because there's a lot of fans that we go through all over indies that say, you know, F WWE, we're not going to watch it. But I watch NXT, shut your mouth. So um, and then also you take Lucha Underground, which is not a wrestling company. It's his own show. It just employs people from uh, AAA and other indie uh, wrestling uh, organizations, you know. So after that, you know, at the end of the day, you really have TNA and ROH, which is on the same channel. Now, TNA uh, is on the downside because, number one, nobody knew about their move to Destination America, really. They don't have a strong fan base. And then plus, uh, in the eyes of Destination America, shareholders of TNA, they really soured in the last couple of weeks because the tapings were in England. And, you know, being a Destination America, they, they didn't like it, even though TNA has a heavy England uh, following. So they justified it on putting the belt on uh, Kurt Angle just to just to satisfy uh, uh, TNA. But with ROH, I've been to, we've been to about three or four, maybe six ROH shows, and the fans are just loyal as hell. Like, the, the action is always on top. Uh, it never disappoints. Even a horrible ROH, a disappointing ROH match is better than a recent WWE match. So my pick in this is uh, ROH. All right. Tove. Um, That's a very good question, especially when you asked about showing loyalty. That's really hard. Um, for me, because I've been a I've been a TNA fan since the beginning, and to see these other promotions rise up is very difficult. Because at one point TNA was the alternative, and now I'm looking at it and it's like you know, if TNA was to die, and I don't want a company to die, but if it was to die, I realize now that it really wouldn't affect my alternatives that much. Because now I watch Ring of Honor, Lucha Underground, New Japan Pro Wrestling, and that's really hard, you know. It's like when you have a PS2 and you love your PS2 and you don't want your PS2 to die, but then when you're much older you have so many other systems to fall back on. Um, That's hard, and and I think that's what the exciting thing is because there's a lot of younger fans out there that may have heard about the Monday Night Wars, but they went around back then, or they might be too young to remember, and they really don't know what it's like to get up on a Monday afternoon and actually have to choose between Nitro and Raw. And now some of these fans are now going to get a taste of what that's like, of being able to go home on a Wednesday afternoon and being able to choose which wrestling show to watch. This is a very big deal. 
Uh, this is going to be my first time watching Ring of Honor on television all these years. You know, Ring of Honor, it doesn't come on in my area, you know, so mm-hmm. I always have to watch it on the computer. And watching it on TV is completely different. When you watch something on TV, it gives off a more professional feel, especially if you have an HD television. But um, right now, at this point in time, as far as, like, which brand I'm more loyal to, it's probably Lucha mm-hmm. Underground. I would probably watch Lucha first. Uh, I would watch NXT last, and nothing against NXT, only because when I try to watch NXT last, when I, when I try to watch NXT live, it always lags on the network. But uh, as far as which company right now has the advantage, when you, whenever a war starts, I always give the advantage to whoever fires the first shot, and, and that's Ring of Honor. Uh, this is a clear statement from Ring of Honor. Ring of Honor, they're tired of being number three. They're tired of all their guys going to TNA and WWE. They're tired of being this smaller time place. This is a clear shot for Ring of Honor. This is a clear message sent from Ring of Honor. They're trying to dethrone TNA. They're trying to be the number two brand. You know, a lot of fans don't know. Their house shows are great. You guys have been to their house shows. They always draw good numbers. Their merchandise is good. Their pay-per-view is good. The product is good. The only thing Ring of Honor has ever lacked is just exposure. They just need more exposure, and this is clearly the first step to that. So I'm, I'm giving the advantage right now to Ring of Honor. You know, people can can give improvised answers like, well, Lucha Underground technically isn't a promotion, or, well, NXT is a developmental brand. Okay, that's cool, but this is a clear, you can't deny that this is Ring of Honor. They're clearly trying to push TNA off this, the number two spot, and, and they're aiming for it. So I'm going to give the advantage to Ring of Honor right now. All right, so I got NFC Game Boy, Ring of Honor. Toast says Ring of Honor. Did you say Ring of Honor or Lucha? Toast yeah, Ring of, Lucha, Honor. Right? Ring of Honor. Ring of Honor. I okay. said Lucha so is the brand team. I'm the most loyal to, but I'm going to give the advantage to Ring of Honor right now. So both of you are, okay. Yeah, I say so too, Toast. Yeah, so mm-hmm. everybody's going for, uh, you say everybody, everybody agrees that the most advantage goes to Ring goes to Ring of Honor? Yep. I agree. Yeah. So, right, you think so, too? Okay. Yep, you know I am. I love Ring of Honor. You know I, am. I also have a point that uh, nobody has mentioned yet. Is, sure. If anybody wants to, okay. Also yeah, yeah. with Ring of Honor, um, I will admit to this: I have not watched Ring of Honor until 2011 when San Clair, San Clair Broadcasting uh, picked it up. I watched it in the tape trading days when Samoa Joe and CM Punk was in it where I had to know somebody who had a DVD or go out to a certain shop in Virginia and buy it. So with Ring of Honor's intense wrestling and uh, hardcore fan base, I will say that uh, Ring of Honor is number two now in in the uh, United States behind WWE because Ring of Honor is actually so good that WWE is trying to scoop up their uh, talent and bring them up to WWE. And it happened with uh, Samoa Joe and a few others. But you Mm -hmm. have to think, though, that... um, and I talked with Larry Legend months ago when I uh, visited the studios that our uh, Ring of Honor was, is based out of Philadelphia. But here's the thing. Ring of Honor was not shown in Philadelphia when they acquired the, uh, new television deals for them. So it, it, it's, like kind of a, it's kind of like a backlash against Ring of Honor. So this Destination America is going to shoot them up tenfold. And by the way, TNA is going Why Everybody's leaving TNA. Taz left. Uh, you know, they're taping their episodes. The commentators are in Nashville uh, trying to be in sync with the episodes. It it just pushes them out the door. And Destination America says Ring of Honor is going to help TNA. But to me, I don't think it is. I think people are just going to be like having TV on. Well, TNA is coming out to ROH. When ROH has finished uh, taping their episodes, they're going to stop and turn the TV off. Now, I admit to me, though, uh, I watch Ring of Honor pay-per-views, and I go to the television tapings when they come to Baltimore, but I don't watch them on TV because of their time slots. They're on Saturday nights, and usually Under the Mat Radio is out doing business, or Sunday mornings, which sucks because it's football season. Yeah, yeah, that that is a good point. Uh, and to uh, to piggyback on what Shin said is, uh, you know, I've gotten some unpopular flack for saying this, but I'm not afraid to say it. 
You know, uh, I'll give credit where credit is due to Triple H. You know, NXT is cool and all, but, you know, as far as I'm concerned, all NXT is is just a better quality Ring of Honor. Watch an episode of NXT. Watch watch an episode of NXT and then watch an episode of Ring of Honor. There's no difference. The only difference is NXT has a women's division. The camera quality is better, and the sound quality is better. You know, and in in the most recent year, like at at first, at first NXT was building their own guys. You know, and and I'll give Triple H credit. You know, there's like your Tyler Breezes, there's your Baron Corbins, and your Enzo Amore. So NXT has a few homegrown guys, but if you look at the roster right now, all the guys that are the most over, you'll see a pattern. Sami Zayn, Kevin Owens, Hideo Itami, all these dudes are indie dudes, dudes that made their names in the Ring of Honor, New Japan, and other place. Triple H is just essentially making NXT another Ring of Honor. That's all he's doing. He's quietly taking all the indie guys and putting them under WWE developmental contracts. NXT is just a better quality Ring of Honor. I'm not, I'm not saying that's a bad thing, but these fans that are not able to watch Ring of Honor, they're looking at NXT and they're like, oh, wow, this is amazing. I've never seen this before, but it's like if you had Ring of Honor, you would realize he's just copying what they're doing. And now that Ring of Honor is getting a wider TV deal, hopefully these fans can now see that, you know, there really is no difference. But for, for me, I will say, is... Right now, the advantage, in a small way, would go to Leecher, looking at it from the perspective of it's the one show out of all of them that has a completely different look and feel. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yep. So Leecher, even though Leecher may not have, and granted, Leecher is you know, you know, more based, is predicated as a TV show with episodes, it's more episodic, which is cool. <laughs> in order in order for any war to happen to be successful, whatever the opposing sides, you gotta have a hell war villain or either way, whoever's going against each other, whether it be two people, five, six, ten, you gotta have they gotta have some kind of opposition. You gotta have a difference. You it's, it will be born if you got two WWEs or two TNAs or WCWs. Lucha is the one that has the total different look, total different feel, everything's different. They only have a theme song. It's got their weird farting noise, whatever the hell that noise is, whatever that is. Yeah, that's Lucha. And like so said, NXT, you're like, oh, NXT is great. Ring of Honor been doing it for years. (laughs) So now you get to see what Ring of Honor's been doing, which is the predecessor to what NXT is, and everybody likes NXT because it's not WWE, but really NXT is... Uh, like you said, in Book Glory 5 version of Ring of Honor. So the question is, too, is will somebody change? Will a company change their views to change their style to try to get over? And that's a big question there. I believe you got a call. I believe this is David Hero. Bring it right here. David Hero? Hey, guys. How's it going? Hey, what's going on, brother? Um, I'm just chilling and uh, listening about the Wednesday Night Wars, I guess, huh? Yeah, yes. I had to get them up here. Oh, yeah. Yes, it is. I, it's um, fine. Well, David, I act- thank, David thank, you for, thank you for coming on. I know we haven't been able to talk to you in a bit. I know you've been busy, but thank you for coming on to the show. Absolutely. Thanks, Shane, for getting you on um, so we can talk about this great topic. Go ahead, Shane. I, I asked uh, Mr. Hero to come up here because I had read his Facebook tweet. <laughs> I mean, his Facebook post, and um, I actually agreed on uh, a lot of his posts that he was trying to tell people. Even I sent the invite to him, and I and for a great mind like David Hero, I really wanted him to be on the show and just read out the line for everybody as far as Hero form or even be the booker. Yes. Well, I appreciate that. I don't know if I'd call myself a mind. I just, I just have a lot of different opinions, and I, I try to look at. I don't look at it as much like a wrestling fan, but more like a promoter or a guy that's running a business as to why certain things are happening. You know, and and and, and that's how guys like Triple H and Vince McMahon and uh, you know Joe Coff and the people that run Lucha Underground and even sometimes Dixie Carter they try to run things like a business. <laughs> All right, so, David, while you're on here, um, we asked the question of, one, David, who do you feel will have the advantage of this, air quote, Wednesday night war 
And um, what what show do you feel you would be more allured to to watch? Well, I'll be honest. The one that's going to have the advantage is the number two wrestling company in the in the country right now, and that's NXT. Because here's why. Um, first of all, it has the biggest wrestling company in the world promoting it. It's able to get their NXT stars on Monday Night Raw and SmackDown. And a lot of people don't get Destination America. They don't get the L Ray Network. But they can go on and download an app to watch WWE on their smartphone, their smart TV, their laptop, their tablet, whatever they want. And um, more people will have access to that than they will to the to the other two stations. Hmm. All right. Okay. Um, what do you feel more? What do you feel you would be more allured to watch? Okay, NXT has the advantage in, in your viewpoint, but for you being a fan, David, who would you tend to watch more? Well, I mean, for me, it, it's it's kind of a. It, it's hard to say. I mean, because I have, I do have a lot of friends in TNA, you know, and I want to see them do well. I want to see them succeed. I want to see that brand continue to grow. I don't think that's going to happen, though. Um, the Ring of Honor guys, extremely talented. It's really not my thing um, because I, I like a lot of ring psychology. I like stories to be told. I don't understand how you can hit a guy with 12 DDTs and five super kicks and not beat him. But you know that's just that's just how they they, they do, do their events. Um, Lucha Underground. I don't know. I watched a little bit, and I, I have I have yet to be able to watch the entire episode. And uh, but I, I have watched the entire episode of NXT. And for me, I you know the production quality is off the charts. Uh, I think their announcers do an amazing job, and uh, they have a lot of good talent there. I mean. It's not the sexy pick. I'm sure there's a lot of wrestling fans that are listening right now that would say, oh, Lucha Underground and Ring of Honor. But, uh, you know, for me, that's just not what I like, what, what I what I always will watch. I mean, for me, I'm uh, more of the NXT brand. Which, if you think about it, NXT is really um, for the Ring of Honor and old school ECW fans that hated WWE, WWF. They said, oh, I'll never go to a WWE show but now they're selling out 4,000 feet buildings on the East Coast to watch NXT, which is a WWE show. You know, um, since we're talking about the uh, pros and cons and stuff, I would like to take this time to discuss some of the negatives of, the, of NXT, and I'd like to see if there's anyone else out there that feels the same. NXT is cool, but there's a lot of stuff they do that actually kind of pisses me off. For starters, is it just me? How many times have they had, like, a squash jobber match, and they never say who the other person is? Man. They do that all the time. Yeah. It's really yeah. annoying. And as a blogger that has to, like, detail the previews to fans, it's really annoying because I want to know who the person's name is, and they just don't. It's like they do it, and they assume you as a fan know who the person is. When a wrestling show starts, usually the first thing you see is the commentators or the announcers saying, hi, welcome to wherever they are. They don't do that on NXT. They rarely ever show the commentary team. It's like they just assume you know who they are already. And then well, you have guys like Hideo Itami, Sami Zayn, guys like that that show up every week. But then you have guys that are clearly not injured, and they show up like once a month. Then they disappear for a full month, and they come back like Jason Jordan. And it's like, what? You know, it's just weird. I mean, NXT is great, but they, they, there's a lot of stuff they do that's just really like, what? I'm yeah, uh, I, I mean, uh, I guess the reason why they might not use some of the guys' names, they might not be under contract, first of all. They might just be local guys in the Orlando, Tampa area that are, are getting a look or, you know, that want to be Rosebuds or something like that. Um, <laughs> but, but, but as far as guys that, you know, come and go, that, that I don't know. That's definitely something that has to do with creative. And, uh, you know, that's always been an issue with WWE products. You know, there's guys that, You'll see them on TV for, you know, one, two months, sometimes three months, and they're gone for two months, and they come back, and they're slightly repackaged. Right. Right, that is true. Um, David, if you could, 
and I'll ask everybody this. Suppose you're in charge of TNA. Of course, Destination America announced they're letting TNA go in September. What would you mm-hmm. do to save it? Because now you have your Ring of Honor. Now it was on the same channel. You got NXT, of course. You got Lucha Underground. Global Force is starting to make a run. You got House of Hardcore and Fight Network. So you got a good three, four, five of wrestling shows. And if you're in charge of TNA, what would you do to try to make a difference? Well... If I was in charge of TNA, you have to start at the top. And you have to look at all the executive vice presidents and presidents and guys that have been running the company for the last 12 or 13 years, 14 years, and see who's accountable. And maybe you have to replace some of those people. Because obviously, you know, you, you, you've you gone through guys like Hulk Hogan and Sting and Ric Flair and some of the guys in the NWO were even there. You know, they, they've had some of the biggest names you know, in the last 15, 20 years, come through their company, and they haven't been able to draw a number. So you have to look at the business aspect of the company, and you have to start over from the top. You have to remove a Dixie Carter and and the other people that are in charge, and you have to go out and get a legitimate promotion marketing company to help them make people aware of of, uh, Total Nonstop Action Impact Wrestling. You know, one, one one of the best hires they did... In TNA was when they hired Raphael Morphy about a year or so ago. They brought him in from WWE, put him in charge of live events, and he wound up leaving. He was the most buttoned-up guy because he knew he was under the Vince McMahon learning tree for marketing and promotions, and they and they let him go simply because they weren't running house shows anymore. So you have to bring in guys that understand how to sell live events. And and you have to bring in people that have been in the wrestling business. A lot of the people in TNA Wrestling are interns or people that were Dixie Carter's friends in the music industry, not wrestling people. Right. 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 Because they they right. have great talent. I mean, they do. They have a they have some of the best in ring performers out there. Guys that can tell you know a story, physically gifted, good on the mic. But the problem is people are not aware that Impact Wrestling exists. And I know that for a fact because there were many a times, even last year at WrestleCon in New Orleans, I w- we were doing um, signings with Kevin Nash and Kurt Angle. Kurt Angle's in TNA. And everyone's like, hey, um, Kurt, you know, where have you been? You know, are you coming back to wrestling ever? Mm-hmm. And he's huh. like, I've been in TNA for the last That's five years. Yeah, exactly. You told he told us the same thing. Mm-hmm. Is it sad and, that Kurt, and there were Kurt times I, the same thing? Yeah, and there were times I'd be walking through the airport with Kevin Nash when he was in TNA, and I'm like, hey, you know, he was in town for a show. He's like, hey, what are you doing here? He's like, I'm wrestling tonight. They're like, for who? He's like, TNA. Hmm. I mean, it's amazing the people didn't know. I mean, a prime example is when they signed Hulk Hogan and they took out billboards in Times Square. Are you kidding me? Take that money and do commercials on Monday Night Raw across the country. You know, it, right. there, there's far better ways than, the, than than you know to get your name out there for the company than have Hulk Hogan on a billboard in Times Square. Yeah. So, um, actually, I have. Uh, I I actually have this. Um, I wanted to ask because, you know. Um, I think we, I think I harped on the point at the earlier show, but even when Sting came in WWE, I think either WWE or the actual today's wrestling fan they acted like Sting never wrestled in 14 years after WCW closed up. Exactly, and that's how WWE treated him. They said he disappeared for the last 14 years because no but no one in WWE respects the TNA brand because it has never drawn. When they were doing house shows at one time, when they were lucky to break 300 people, when you have Kurt Angle on the show and Jeff Hardy, you've got to be kidding me. <laughs> you know, those guys right there should put at least 1,000 people in the building. Right. And and from what I was told, um, per inside sources of TNA, and uh, some of the boys that work in TNA that I know of too, David, is one of the main things that, it frustrates a lot of boys, and that's the problem with TNA is their PR. 
Is that their PR department, their promotion, the advertising, the advertising. They, they don't do good at advertising shows at all. Even when they was on Spike, um, not Spike, yeah, when um, they was on um, Spike with on, on the on the channel before Destination America, you right. barely saw any of the stars on any other shows. It, that's how you that's how you gain attention. It was in, it was barely was even any commercials, any billboards. Well, how do you expect people to watch your shows if you don't even do it? See Here's that? a prime example. You know, let, let's say that TNA is coming to Milwaukee, okay? And they're going to be in Milwaukee on Saturday. And they will send James Storm to Milwaukee on Friday for one radio interview. And that one radio what? interview will, will not well, – it, it's an example. I'm, I'm changing the names to protect the innocent, okay? okay. So they send, they, send, they send James Storm in to do one radio interview when – he could have done multiple interviews, okay, and at least get him on the country music station because it's the cowboy, James Storm. What station did they get him booked on? The urban station in Milwaukee. The hell? That, that the audience Don't will not sense. relate with cowboy James Storm. <laughs> and I just sat there and I just scratched my head. I'm like, you've got to be kidding me. You know, but that... <laughs> That's what it is, and you know if if they they you know and they have, they have some really sweet nice people in that office that work for them, but I don't think they truly understand the nature of the beast. Is the urban market in um, that station in in Milwaukee know about TNA wrestling, or did they have a smidgen of a clue? I no, they it was back when I was doing some work with uh, Clear Channel Radio. And they said, hey, they're like, so-and-so's coming in here. Can you help us out? And I was like, oh, okay. Well, this will be interesting, you know, because the country station is across the hall, and they didn't even bother trying to to get them on there. So all bad, all bad. Sometimes you hear stuff like this, you hear stories like this, and you just, you're just so shocked and appalled at the same time because, Mm-hmm. You know better, and you would think they know better. But I, I think the fall of a lot of these companies is that they're trying to relive the battle of WCW and WWE. And the thing about it is is that when that battle was happening, not only was there a lot of money on the table, you had bookers back then, guys who knew how to book a show, guys who knew how to tell a story. A lot of times now you have guys who know how to write stories and stuff, but they don't understand the nature of wrestling. And no, there's not one guy. A, I, oh, go ahead. I even see this at indie promotions where just just basic indie shows, a guy will come out here and they have a match and he get put in a, a, a super move and everything. And, you know, at, at in a mission, he's out there selling autographs. And you like... You know, yo, he don't you got good. somebody to sell that for you? You know, you, you know, you're trying to help your little local brand and stuff, and you know, you out here selling, you know, autographs. That makes your match pretty much not that damaging and, and not that great because you're not really selling what's going on. And on a on a bigger scale, I think the failure of TNA is because they try to emulate so much of WWE instead of just being their own entity. Being your own right. brand, you know, even if you can't be number one, be number two. You know what I mean? That's why you got Harley Davidsons. That's why you got Dodge and Ford and and Chrysler. That's why you got all these different car makers and stuff. You know what I mean? Just be your own brand, and you'll you'll make it there eventually. But everybody want to emulate they they e, and they all yeah. fail. <laughs> like and that's what I bring my point about uh, uh, Ring of Honor because, like I said earlier, uh, David that Ring of Honor is doing so much for themselves. They're not even looking at other companies. They're doing so much for themselves that WWE is coming down and trying to swoop their talent. I mean, uh, in February, it was it was Moose that they were trying to pick up. It was Mandy Leon they were trying to pick up. Uh, March, it was the Briscoes they were trying to pick up. And now, uh, WWE has been in talks with, well, at least NXT was, been in talks with Samoa Joe to the point where nobody knew he came to NXT, and when he did, it was like a big explosion when it happened. But here's the thing. We knew. Um, I mean, yeah, we, we knew insiders, but here's the thing. 
Samoa Joe is on the NXT brand, and I think in my mind that he's working a deal like Rhino. Now, will he be called up to the main roster? Will they be interested in him? Uh, on the side of Triple H, I think so, but it's Vince. He's just a fat guy who uh, got uh, indie buzz, but he has dates in the Ring of Honor Wrestling over the summer, which I think is not non-televised or non-taping. So it just it just brings to the point where uh, that even it gets to the point where everybody's trying to be like WWE. WWE in in a in a closeted sense is trying to be like ROH. Well, what they did is they refined ROH and made it NXT is what they did. You know, and the reason why Ring of Honor does so well, it's owned by a television company that wants to make money. You know, and they and they have wrestling people working in that front office. You know, Gary Jester, who's in charge of their promotions and marketing, he used to work for WCW. So he understands how to book a building and how to cut a good deal. You know, and then you have Jeff Jones, who was working with ECW. You know, and, uh, you know, they're, they're doing a great job with their talent. I mean, for them to get on with Destination good America friend of was ours. brilliant, you know, because they hedged their bets. Because now, for the markets that they're not in, Destination America might be in those markets. And it's a recap show. So it's not going to be, you know, you know, their full show. You know, you mentioned Mandy Leone. I think if given the opportunity, she could be a, she could be a big star. You know, yeah. I, I think that, you know, she looks like the girl that can walk off the cover of a magazine, and she seems like she can talk, and she's, and she's pretty decent in the ring. Yeah, and we know her personally. And, we, we know yeah. her personally and see her at a lot of shows. Yeah, she, what, uh, she's a sweetheart. That's true. Yeah, she is very, very good to you too. Shout out to her, the Mandy Leon and our buddies at RH. I want to want to ask this too, David. Is let's flip the script here. I know we're talking about Ting and TNA and, and NXT and what can we do to do better. Out of the mm-hmm. brands that are on TV, you know, RH. Well, with the excluding NXT because they have the juggernaut behind them. Besides NXT, Lucha. RH, TNA, Global Force, House of Hardcore. Who do you feel has the least that who do you feel right now is the most handicapped? Or do you feel that may not succeed as well as they think they could in this war? Uh, right now it's Global Force because they don't have a TV deal in place. You know? Right. I mean I like Jeff wow. Jarrett. I consider Jeff a good friend. The problem with Global Force Wrestling is who is their main star? Jeff Jarrett, you know, he he that doesn't want to wrestle. <laughs> you know, yes, sir. <laughs> so you, yeah, you have to wonder. True. Okay, I mean, and, and I get it. I mean, there's only a couple main stars out there. Like the only person on this planet that could ever, well, there's two guys that could turn TNA around. You know, that that can actively get in the ring, and that's John Cena or The Rock. You know, hmm. nobody else will care whoever else goes to TNA. CM Punk could show up uh-huh. in Orlando at the next TV tapings, and it's not going to push a number. Did Tony say Punk? I don't know about that. No. CM Punk will not get TNA Impact Wrestling hi- higher than the ratings that they're already at. He won't sustain it. Uh, uh, in, to, Here's to David, why. To David. He's, he he hasn't he hasn't been missed on Raw and SmackDown. He's been yeah, replaced sure, by three other guys. You know, and also T remember the issue with TNA is they're advertising in their PR, and if they can't even advertise their own wrestlers right, they're not going to advertise PC and Punk well. You know what I mean? Uh, if, if, if he, huh? And also uh, the problem with TNA also is that. He, they kept paying people late over the past uh, two years. Well, I don't know about TNA, that, but I think if he went to Ring of Honor, it would it would do something for them. Yeah, because that would be his homecoming, you know. But it, it's still nobody is ever going to become the number one company as long as WWE is around. Um, but the, the the big problem with TNA is that they're not honest with their talent. No, you know they they had this conference yeah. call. They had this conference call yesterday. Mm-hmm. All the talent wanted to hear is, "Hey, our careers are safe. We we shouldn't have to worry." And nobody could tell them that. That's terrible. And, and MVP tweeted it yesterday too after the news broke out. And he said, "I'll leave my comments after quote unquote the call." 
So you know what that means, David. Yeah, exactly. And everyone has been, since that conference call, has not been reassured about anything. And all they have done, all that talent has done, is welcome the Ring of Honor to Destination America. They sent and their resumes. To Ring of Honor. What's that? They sent their resumes to Ring of Honor as soon as they heard the news. Yeah, but here's the thing. Ring of Honor can't afford to bring on those TNA talents because well, Ring of Honor doesn't have that budget. No. Right, exactly. You don't. Now, would, would it be good? And, and let's think of this. David, wouldn't it be cool? Now, your destination in America, a lot of people may not have you. Still national TV, but you're not available. You have TNA and you have Ring of Honor. Two wrestling companies on your channel. Would it be cool or a good idea to kind of promote some kind of war or some kind of cross, not really a war, but some kind of crossover and Mitch match to get people to watch? No. No, no. No, because you need a winner, and neither company is going to let their creatives take a back right. to the others. And then yeah. I'm because I saw, I saw a post in Thread well, about this early today, and I'm like, I don't know if that's a good idea, but I just wanted to see your viewpoint. Well, okay. remember uh, Super Clash 3 in 1988 with the CWA, WCCW, yeah, AWA, AWA, and it did yeah. not work out. Well, I don't, I don't know about a, a war invasion, but... Well, Ring of Honor does do is every year. Well, not every year. They just started doing it. Is they do uh, War of the Worlds and Global War, where Ring of Honor and New Japan work together. And it's only once a year. The pay-per-views are really cool. But when I thought about the uh, internal way of how it works, it must be hard to work it out because, you know, whose talent goes over? Does the Ring of Honor talent go over or or does the New Japan talent go over? And that's probably why they don't do it that much. I don't see why not. Ring of Honor and TNA couldn't do a show like that. But, you know, again, it's more like, okay, well, what talent goes over? The TNA talent, the Ring of Honor talent. But I don't, I, don't, I, don't, I don't know about a war invasion, but I think a pay-per-view like Global War could be possible. Maybe. Not likely, though. The only problem is TNA doesn't have a pay-per-view audience because they haven't done one in over a year. And mm-hmm. the Ring of Honor talent, if you look at all those little uh, Destination America uh, promos that are coming out. It's Kaz, it's Dan Hills, it's Saban, it's AJ Styles, it's Young Bucks, it's all former TNA talents. Uh, yeah. Actually, who is who is a top ROH talent that never been in TNA? Probably, Probably the Briscoes. Briscoes. Yeah, the Briscoes. No question. Yeah, mm-hmm. Briscoes. Mm-hmm. You had a movie. Lisa was there. Yeah, it's kind of sad, really, because you look at Ring of Honor right now, and it's like a lot of the guys that were TNA for so many years are like Ring of Honor. I think they, I think they got like a tag match coming soon. It's going to be like um, Joe and AJ against Daniels and Kaz, and it was like, <laughs> wow, that was like the yeah. match in TNA. It's like back in oh six, oh seven, or whatever. That's in July in New York. Yeah. Yeah, but that'll be interesting to see what happens now that Ring of Honor is on Destination America. You know how they're going to use. You know, I'm sure Triple H isn't going to want that to air, having their talent on there. No, I, I think Joe's going to be doing uh, no TV deals. So. Yeah, he, Joe is still doing indie dates up to August, but he he can't do any TV deals at all. So, so that right I, there, I, so that right there should tell you that you, you know. will not see yeah. Joe on the main roster until September or it's October. Until September, right? Mm-hmm. I'm not sure if you need to be up. He is a rare deal, but Joe is is able to do to complete his indie dates, but cannot do any TV at all. And like David said, we won't see Joe on the main roster to fall. If I'm Joe, I cancel those indie dates. Here's why: because now you're wrestling with an indie shows in an indie ring with a guy that's indie-rific, and there's a far greater sure. chance of getting hurt and blowing out your knee. That's a good point. Mm-hmm. I'm with David. I, I will cancel him. I just don't know about Joe being on the main roster. I mean, I like Samoa Joe. Why not? But Vince, but Vince McMahon, we all know that Vince McMahon lost his touch. So now John Cena is still the man. But with with Samoa Joe, I just believe. Huh? Mm-hmm. Excuse me. Say so Cena still no. still going to be the man to somebody top top him for his money. Yeah, yeah, and also I just I just feel though that like. 
he's going to be watered down a little bit because you know Vince McMahon likes the hawking figures and everything. And Kevin Owens is, uh, to me, crushing scene as far as the promos up until this Sunday. But it's going to get to the point where, like we said this week, that Kevin Owens is just going to get a rub. He's not going over. So, you know, with Joe in the roster, I just have this fear for him and also the other international renaissance talent that's in NXT right now. Yeah, that's a good question. How you feel about that, David? I think that the reason why Kevin Owens has gotten over on John Cena is because John Cena has backed off a little bit because they want to showcase him. They want to make him a threat. They want to, they want to see if he has what it takes. You look at John Cena versus Kevin Owens in the ring cosmetically, it is a no-brainer. I mean, you have the guy who is the face of the WWE and the guy that is the face of independent wrestling. And, mm-hmm. yeah, Kevin Owens may have gotten those two pump-up power bombs on Cena the last two weeks. That's not going to happen again on Sunday. There's no way John Cena is going to lay down on two Raws and one pay-per-view for a guy. He's going to beat him, and it'll be a fight, and... Kevin Owens will be made as a uh, as a semi main event talent because he had a competitive match with John Cena, but uh, I, I just I just don't see Vince McMahon, who still gets the final say in everything, saying yes, we're going to go with Kevin Owens as the face of our company, and we're going to give him a good run. I just don't see it. Well, and, I uh, disagree with you. I, I disagree okay. with you, David. I will say that the pump-up power bomb that uh, Kevin Owens do, he's going to do it to Cena, but as usual, Cena's going to kick out it too. Well, yeah, he's not going to beat him with it. I mean, he'll he'll do it, but he's not going to leave him laying is what I mean, you know? Yeah. And in the history of, of, of wrestling, nobody has ever come on to the big show, beat the top guy or left him laying twice, and then beat him on uh, – in a big match. It's never happened. Right. And it's not um, going to start with John Cena. The, the only time a DLC guy has ever beaten uh, a top guy was on SmackDown when Carlito beat John Cena. That that, that I can remember on the first night. But look at all the build-up Carlito got. And Cena was the U.S. champ at the time. Carlito was getting, you know... Uh, vi- vignettes every week for like a month or so. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Now, uh, but I mean, it's a different yeah. time. John Cena wasn't the top draw at the time either. Now, also, right. uh, David, I don't want to, I don't want to divert from the uh, show, but I asked this this week, um, and you being a great mind, like I say again, and a lot of people got butt hurt over this uh, situation. But what was your opinion about Kevin Owens? Power bombing Cena, then he uh, raised the NXT belt up and stepped on the United States title. It, it didn't bother me. I mean, that, that's what heels do. I mean, yeah. it's like what the yeah. Iron Sheik used to do. He used to spit on the American flag and got right. a ton of heat. And, you know? And, and like I said to you, David, is that no one's cared about the U.S. title since 03 in WWE. So they gave it to Cena. You know, they, you know, they gave the scene in, in Darcy Taylor, Daniel Bryan to help give the belt mm-hmm. meaning. But before Cena had it, nobody cared about the U.S. belt. Rusev had it, really defended it. Most people forgot the U.S. title was still on WWE and nonetheless existed. Then Ambrose had right. the U.S. title. He didn't show up T-Rawls with the belt. So, mm-hmm. um, real quick, we got Saltine. Saw, saw you still with us? I'm trying to see Saul. He means I'll be there. Okay. Yeah, I'm um, Okay, so I'll tell you, do you have a question? We got David Harrell on. Do you have a question for David Harrell about the Wednesday Night Wars? Uh, yeah. Um, since I've been in Ring of Honor, it's like they bring in a lot of talent that sometimes don't work in WWE, and they make them, like, stars. Um, What's your feeling about that when the WWE don't, like, don't think their talent will grow, but Ring of Honor can make them special? What do you think about that? Well, here's why. Because WWE has 110 guys under contract between Raw, SmackDown, and NXT. And those guys get... Some of them get a pretty sizable guarantee. Um, The guys in Ring of Honor, it's not, you know, a lot of the guys in Ring of Honor and TNA have secondary jobs. 
So the guys at Ring of Honor and TNA, they will work harder. They will give more because they want to get to the point where they will get those bigger guarantees. And and the, and, and Ring of Honor has you know, at times has to stick with some of the homegrown talent because their budgets don't allow them to go out and get you know newer faces or popular faces or pay somebody more money. So the, you know, so, so it's kind of by default at times that Ring of Honor stays with their homegrown talent. And if you game boys. Oh, okay. Well, my last question for you, David, because I, I know we gotta wrap this up. Um, my last question to you is, is that you know uh, Vince McMahon had uh, back in WrestleMania time actually went to an NXT show, and he felt like it was okay. He didn't really feel like it was a great show. He think it was it it, it did okay, I guess, for what it is mm-hmm. worth. How do you feel that the man responsible for the way wrestling is now, portrayed in, you know, in homes all around the, the world, feeling about, you know, NXT, uh, a brand that's similar to Ring of Honor type style wrestling or show, feeling like it's just okay? Do you feel like... He's absolutely, he's absolutely right. I like Ring of Honor. I think it is a great niche wrestling market. Um... NXT, uh, yeah, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm we're, we're talking about NXT. NXT, it's a great niche market. NXT cannot go to the Barclays, um, you know, uh, uh, building and sell it out. They're not going to sell out Madison Square Garden, you know. They're not going to sell out Phillips Arena. They're not going to sell out the Bradley Center in Milwaukee. They're not going to get ten to twelve to fifteen thousand people that are going to buy to watch NXT product because it's not for everybody. Vince McMahon created WrestleMania with ring psychology, good guys versus bad guys. When it, when Jake Roberts hit somebody with a DDT, it was the most devastating move in wrestling and nobody ever kicked out. Now a DDT is a transition. When Hulk Hogan hit the leg drop, nobody kicked out. Now it's just a move. So... That's what Vince McMahon sees when he watches NXT. He appreciates it. He knows it's making him money. He knows that it's worth the investment. But he also knows that it's, NXT is not going to sell out 80,000 people, you know, out in San Jose at Levi Stadium. So for everyone that loves NXT, it is awesome. It is great. It is great for that niche wrestling fan. But the guy, that, but you know, the, the Joe Walmart wrestling fan that only knows John Cena is not gonna is not gonna want to watch a two hour, three hour show of NXT because he's not gonna understand it. That is true. Um, Thank you. And, Thank you. And, and, and I will say that uh, there are a lot of fans out there. Uh, at the same time, that if we mention uh, Ring of Honor or Lucha Underground or even uh, sometimes TNA, and people would just say who. What is that? And mm-hmm. that's it. So a lot of times it's like, have you heard about WWE this, WWE that? And it's like, and I'm wearing a Ring of Honor shirt. And it's like, what is Ring of Honor? And you have to take them through like a whole week to tell them what it is. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, and, 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 you know, for me, my biggest problem with Ring of Honor, and I've said this for a long time, and I like a lot of the guys in Ring of Honor. They're very mm-hmm. talented. But the fact is that unless you put a bullet in somebody's head, you can't beat them because they'll kick out of everything. That is true. So that right there, <laughs> that that right there kills the theory of, <laughs> of wrestling. This so. is so much mm-hmm. Jim Ross said that a few man. weeks ago. Jim Ross. Did yeah, he? he told Did he that? that? That's the only thing about it. Yeah, that, you know, he told us that. <laughs> he did say so. that. He, he did. It's the he truth. I mean, the and, and there's great talents there. But I mean, when 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 Shawn Michaels hit the super kick, he beat somebody. When Dolph Ziggler hits him with it, Dolph Ziggler uses so many finishing moves in his matches and can't beat anybody with it. Yep. He has a super yeah, kick. A- he has the famouser and the zigzag, and can't beat anybody with him. <laughs> what is the zigzag? What? That's when he jumps up on the guy's thing. back and. And, yeah. Grab that chin. No, I mean yeah. I I've seen what it is, but it's just that it's just a move. Period. Like you just drag somebody's neck down, and that's it. Here is a prime example of how pro wrestling has changed. 
I used to remember when King Kong Bundy would hit the avalanche on somebody yeah. and made my mm-hmm. skin crawl. When I would see Jake Roberts hit the DDT, I feared for the guy's life. Okay? And right. those would mm-hmm. beat people. Nowadays, and, I, and Scotty Tuhati is one of my best friends. <laughs> Scotty well, Tuhati beats good, so. people. He beats people with the worm, but people Good kick job. out of DDTs. That Good right job. there <laughs> tells you how much wrestling has changed. Right, and and, and yeah. not only that, David. If, if you can say this real quick, is back in the day, and I know uh, all of us said watch wrestling about. And I'm sorry, Dave. I know you're like the the, the little older one of the other group here in NFC Game Boy. Oh, mm-hmm. Is um, remember back in the day, '80s and all. The only wrestler I remember, correct me if I'm wrong, David, and I see Game Boy, you correct me if I'm wrong too, that I remember that could put that finishing move on a wrestler multiple times, and you knew they probably was going to get out, was Ric Flair doing the figure four. Because Ric Flair didn't really beat a lot of people for his big names with the figure four. He had other ways. But, like you said, everyone else that did finishing moves, the Russian Sickle, the Scobie Deathlock, the... Uh, um, the uh, the Road Warriors, they did the Dean's Day Device, Bret Hart, Heart Attack. Once the finish move was done, that was it. Nobody ever kicked yep, out of exactly. Jake's DDT. Nobody kicked out of Jake's DDT. Aunt Anderson did the Spine Buster, depending on the time period, nobody kicked out of that. And now it's like, <clears throat> real quick, too, something we know, know that we start saying on the show is moves that we get tired of seeing at every single indie event. And wrestling event is the super kick. Why the hell does anybody do a You watch Raw, it's like 30 super kicks. The Usos be like 80 in the match. You got, uh, when Del Rio was there, he did a kick. Ziggler did like three, four super kicks. Everybody's doing a super kick. At one point, the Young Bucks. The, the Young Bucks super kick. And it's the game, boy. We, we, what was that indie show we watched? We was at some indie show. We counted like 15 super kicks in one match. One thing I'm starting to notice is um, I'm starting to notice that uh, wrestlers are starting to watch the little New Japan with the no sell. I think uh, mm-hmm. who was it? It was it was Lucha Underground. Yeah, 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 Lucha Underground. Yeah,
is, of course, the next debate, David Harrell, and we said this, we got to make sure you're still on for that, is Hogan versus Austin. Who was more influential in the WWE for Vince McMahon, Hogan, or Austin? Are you still for that, David Harrell? Absolutely. I am all for that. And There's no question. Guys, and, and I believe this is going to be a debate because, let you know, David, and then I see Game Boy and Shane can attest to that. And so people are still commenting and talking about the Sting Triple H debate that we had a <laughs> week before WrestleMania. Yes. yes. <laughs> really? Yes, they are. Yes, they are. Yes, they are. Yes, they are. Uh, yeah, you guys can have yeah, that yeah. one. Sting Triple H was way more interesting. Hogan Austin's that's that's a no brainer, but you guys well, have fun with that one. I, I will piggyback off of uh text because they're still commenting on it. It got to the point, uh, David, that it was a lot of blood on our light page when we put that post yeah. out and people were just <laughs> cursing each other out and talking <laughs> dumb. Yeah. And just, mm-hmm. it, it got to the point where he got to the point where Tech comment, uh, he, he contacted me at 3 in the morning, was telling me, who's this dude, who that dude, and we just had to put a stop motion to it because people, it was one guy that was trolling, and he was like, oh, was getting real. F and die because Triple H ain't better than Sting, and I'm like, what the hell? Like, calm down, like, brother. Yes. Yeah, calm down. Don't get a hard one. Damn. He got butt hurt. Well, I, I want to I wanna say something on a, on a side note, on a serious note. David, I sent you messages when you was going through your surgery and everything. I just want to say yes. congratulations yes. to your brother. I'm glad well, everything thanks, was man. success. Yeah. I know yeah, you've been yeah. rehabbing and getting your, you know, I'm not going to make no toe jokes. But, <laughs> <laughs> you know, <laughs> not not make no toe jokes. but, you know, I'm mm-hmm. I'm just glad that, you know, I'm glad everything was a success. I'm glad you, you know, yeah. getting everything back together. And um, thanks, I'm glad man. that you took your time out to come on the show to help, the, you know, the fans to help discuss about everything, and um, you know, I wish you the best and, and a speedy recovery. You know, I appreciate it, guys. I do. Be, um, my plan is to be out in Brooklyn for SummerSlam, so I got to get these feet mended up so I can get out there and and get into some uh, East Coast shenanigans. So I'm sorry. There you go. I'm sorry to interrupt, awesome. but um, I got I got a text from uh, our security LSR, and he asked about the overused moves. He's like, "What about the clothesline from hell?" Yeah. Absolutely. Everything's over yeah, these nowadays. The most devastating say, finishing, say, finishing maneuver is John Cena's uh, attitude adjustment. And oh, that's just God. a fireman's carry into a backdrop. That's all that it is. Yeah, and that's people. Speaking of, speaking of which, because of John Cena, whatever happened to the good old days of the Death Valley driver, like the Perry Sadden version? Because <laughs> yeah. you remember, yeah, Cena's original originally did the Death Valley driver for like two weeks on SmackDown, and then he deemed it unsafe, so he started doing a, the Fireman's Curry flip. Mm-hmm. Um, well, well, actually, um, I wanted to ask David here also from the pay per view, what do you think about John Cena? Uh, Attitude of Justin Rusev on some fireworks and Rusev not coming out with a scratch. <laughs> it's, it's well, it's, it's PG. Kids. You know what I mean? It is PG. Oh, yeah. so. It's four kids. It's WWE four kids. Can't bleed. Can't cuss. Well, Dolph Ziggler, I, I, Dolph Ziggler lost with a headbutt. He headbutted uh, Sheamus and lost. You know, okay, here's my take on Dolph Ziggler. <laughs> I'm pretty certain for the last couple of years that front office has told him, hey, stop overselling every move you're hit with. Because he does. Okay? Yeah, he, gets, he, gets punched, he gets punched in the face, he does a backflip into a bump. Okay? <laughs> so what happens, what happens is that eventually when he is hit with a big finishing move, We've already seen that same huge bump he's taken five or six times throughout the match. So now it doesn't look as devastating because a punch and a kick to the face looks as devastating as the bro kick from Sheamus. Well, yeah, what about, so, the, rock? What, what about the rock flopping like a fish every time he took a Stone Cold Stunner? But that's just a Stone Cold Stunner, though. But, but that was the only time you saw Rock do that for the finish. Yeah. You didn't see that five or six times throughout the match. <laughs> or or uh, Lex Luger uh, overselling everything. Oh, that was worse. Oh, oh. <laughs> yeah. You know. 
It's a good thing Lex was in WCW that whole time. So. Well, Lex Luger is hilarious, man. I love that guy. Well, they, they, um, David Harrell definitely know my my favorite Luger um, selling moment. We talked about this off air. Is I believe it was uh, I'm not sure if it was one of the Clash of Champions, what have you, where Muda sprayed Luger in the face with the green mist, and Luger fell down and yelled at like he got shot. <laughs> <laughs> My favorite, my favorite Luger sell was uh, some nitro, some typical BS where the NWO ran in, and then they sprayed like, uh, you know how they spray paint it? They spray painted like in his hair, and he was just mm-hmm. screaming like he was being racist. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, Any favorite Liga, uh, Liga selling moments, David, before we let you go? Oh. Uh. You know, you know. To be honest, there's just so many. Who knows where to start with with Lex Luger? I mean, my, my, the, the best thing Lex Luger ever did were his back bumps, where he'd always hit his elbows first. You know, for yeah. me that was always amazing. It's like, how does he not, you know, bust his elbows? So. And his legs always staying in the air. Yes. Mm-hmm. So. Oh. Yeah, like I said, it's a good thing he was in WCW. That's why he wasn't a draw in WWF because he didn't work the same way. Yeah, you know, it's true. That is true. I, 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 do, I do love how Luger, when he had the bionic elbow, when he uh, full arm Bret Hart in the head doing that WrestleMania, was that luncheon? Yeah, yeah, yeah it was a like luncheon and knocked Bret Hart out. Yeah, it was funny. Well, I know, David, I know, we, I know we got to let you go. We thank you for your oh. time. Please tell the Team Titan, uh, tell them we said hello, your son. I will do that. Yeah, I will do that. Yeah, this would be a good All right, well, let, well, let's let's uh, you know figure out a date when we can do the Hogan Austin deal, and uh, let, let, let's figure that out for sometime in June. Is that that won't be All fun? Right, we, so we definitely do that. We'll probably do it the end of June. I'll um give you the information for that. All right, sounds great, guys. Thanks for having me on. I'll see. You, I'll, All I'll right, talk thanks, to you guys soon. All right, take, take care. care. Bye bye. Bye bye. Right. Wow. Everybody, that was the great, uh, good old super friend David Hero. Join us talking about the Wednesday Night Wars and other downloadable topics. Uh, shout out to my buddy Nigel who was listening, who texted about uh, Shake My Head Super Kicks, who's listening, because uh, he definitely hates seeing Super Kicks all the time as well. <clears throat> so the Wednesday Night Wars, we covered pretty much the topic. Now pretty much some of Lex Luger sells. NFC Game Boy, you know, you have your <laughs> favorite Lex Luger. <laughs> I don't uh, really Lex have Luger a moment. favorite Lex Luger moment. I can only say that I thank Lex Luger for his little cheap move on uh, WWE uh, Raw or WWE yeah. Raw back in the day. <laughs> he used to have a little secret move uh, cool. that you can do. Lex Luger, he uh, kind of like boots you out of the ring. If you knew how to do like the secret moves on the game, he had a huh. move where he can actually kick you and he'll like, like uh, almost like a field goal kick you out of the ring. Oh, yeah, you got to do, yeah, like, yeah. secret moves and stuff. I used to I used to do that to people when they used to get real mad, <laughs> kick them out of the ring and stuff, and, you know. Yeah. But uh, I, I never really was a big fan of Lex Luger. He just he was amusing, but, you know, he, he just looked like he didn't belong there, you know. But um, I think the WWE has become the Disney of wrestling, and I don't think that anybody really going to top it. It's just duplication <laughs> of it. I think Eric Bischoff is the only person who really came close to taking down Vince McMahon. And I think Vince learned from his mistakes. And now he's kind of taking that note, um, that notion with him throughout the rest of his business. Um, if you if you ever read Eric Bischoff's book, you know, he, he talks about it multiple times. Like, you know, he, he is the man that really almost defeated Vince McMahon. And by his failure, he, he kind of let all of us wrestling fans to the crap that we got now. Because now Vince knows, you know, what to do and what not to say and everything because he's, he almost lost his company. And all the people that helped him, he, you know, he he took care of them and made sure that they were stars and they all made money and everything. Well, majority of them. But, you know, I mean, this is the reason why we have what we have. You know, Vince McMahon learned from his mistakes. Uh, these companies out here, you know, they're, they're going to have to learn from their mistakes. I think Ring of Honor is a great show. 
I do not think it could topple WWE. But in business, you never know. Anything can happen. I still don't think it'll happen, but, you know, I, I, I try to leave that door open because I've seen some of the most strangest and weirdest stuff in this world. As a wrestling fan, I would just say, instead of worrying about the checks, worry about what you love, and that's the wrestling. That's why you tune in. You know, if you like storylines and scripts and, and, you know, move here, move there, finish your move, that's it, then watch Raw, watch SmackDown. If you like, you know, straight style wrestling and all that, then, you know, watch Ring of Honor, you know, watch New Japan. You know, if you if you like Lucha and the camera angles and, and the sort of storylines and stuff, then watch Lucha. You know, watch what you like and just enjoy it now because wrestling don't last forever. You know, it don't. Don't matter how great it is or how, how much money is into it, it doesn't last forever because your body can't keep up with it. You know what I mean? It takes a toll on everybody. Everybody has that number. So to all the wrestling fans out there, you know, enjoy what you enjoy. The 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 Wednesday Wars is going to really make people step their game up, you know. Mm-hmm. Just because they're on Destination America, they want to step their game up. If they want to really truly make money and and continue drawing in people, because if Ring of Honor <laughs> stop drawing in people, well, we're going to be having the same conversation talking about hey, Ring of Honor is starting to fall apart and Destination America thinking about dropping them. You know, it took Spike years to drop TNA and their ratings was falling. You know, Destination America is not Spike. You know, they they see the writing on the wall and they want to deal with it. So just keep so that in the mind. Thing is, last week we don't even the heck, hey, we don't even know Destination America is a channel. <laughs> what is this? Or, uh, actually, what I never even heard of it until it Impact went to Destination. Like Destination America, I had to look on my Comcast and like, oh, I actually got Destination America. Oh, okay. <laughs> I didn't know. I didn't know who the channel existed. But, you know, we live in an era now where we got, like, 800, 900 channels, and we only know about, like, 12. <laughs> you know, we know the ones that we grew up on and, you know, everything like that. They got all types of crazy channels. So, ESPN you know, 20? Yeah, exactly. They got 18 different sports channels for one company. Mm-hmm. Like ESPN got, like, at least, like, 15 different sports channels. Yeah, it's one, well, it's regular ESPN, ESPN2, then the Port Days, which is the Spanish one, ESPN3, ESPN Classic. Uh, set your mouth. Come on. You know what he's doing? ESPN. Yeah, you know what I mean? <laughs> and he plays sports center every day. Wait a minute. ESPN Classic used to be uh, the channel for me growing up. I used to watch old AWA wrestling. Yeah, ESPN Classic is fun. It is. It's, 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 mm-hmm. Like in this game we said, is you have one company well, one channel that has, like, multiple ones. Hey, I want to ask y'all a question. I wanted to ask y'all this Tuesday, but I forgot about it. Um, a fan had sent me – I have fans who send me messages on Facebook. Um, one fan asked me, and it was kind of peculiar, but I I entertained them. But I wanted to know, you know, y'all opinion on it. If the WWE was to come out with a theme park – Two questions. One, where do you think it should be located? And two, do you think that it would be a big draw where they can uh, continue keeping it up, you know, I guess, year after year? So the first question is location and would it be successful, Hmm. I guess? Well, I I can go first on that one. Um, hmm. Well, theme park, like like you said, it had to be in Florida or somewhere like that would always have good weather. Uh, like say in Florida, California, um, Arizona, or in in that that, that escape, you know, um, it'll be fine. I, th- I think I think it'll be good. I think it'll be good. Okay. I I, don't, I actually um I wouldn't Keep go. Keep it to Florida. I mean, Someone text. I, I think Florida, but I I wouldn't go because it, to me the way the product is coming out now. It'd probably be like as cheesy as your kid's uh, WWE figure set, like with the ring that can explode on contact or something, or the, like the money in the bank stuff that they had nowadays. I mean, I'm not to go into all subject, but the toys are just as lackluster. I mean, it was more, it was more, uh, um, it was better back in the day with Hasbro than now they got these toys where you could have detachable rings and 
a wrestler come up with a water bottle that you can hit on somebody's head, thanks, Tech. Uh, okay. But really, I, I, I just I just wouldn't go because to me it would be too too four kids. Like it'd be probably like a a haunted ride that says Cena kicks out at two or something. Okay. Um, Tof? That just sounds really tacky to me. Uh, there's already enough theme parks as it is in that market. I think what they do around WrestleMania with the access events, probably the closest we'll get to that, follow numerous types of things the kids can do and, you know, the fake ring, the fake entrance ramp and all the other stuff that's there. Um, in California or Florida or a Carolina coast, somewhere with nice weather. But um, I think the probably the main problem is is that most wrestling slash sports entertainment fans are are men, and to have a theme park is usually parents bringing their children. You know, so how many wrestling fans have kids? That's probably something you might want to look up to. Uh, I and mean, there's a good number. There's a good number of people there that are wrestling fans that do have kids. But I think the majority are just people like us, just guys in, you know, our mid twenties, early thirties that just have been following wrestling or sports entertainment their whole lives. So um, I probably had to do a little bit more research. Uh, I, I won't say it would it would be impossible. I mean, it's Vince McMahon. He would try. I mean, he tried to make a football league for God's sake, although it didn't work. But right now, I'd say, uh, <laughs> yeah, 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 I'd say overall probably not not a good idea right now. Okay. What about you, All right. I would say down Florida because, you know, basically that's like the center of basically the theme park set. Or probably New York or New Jersey because, you know, New Jersey has six flags and something like, hey, because WWE basically corporation is up in the Northeast, basically. And I was thinking, like, who will come to that park because a lot of people are not fans of wrestling anymore. And you have to find out, like, is it profitable to have it? And, like, who have, like, they'll say, who, um, what brass band has kids to go visit up there? And, like, people just lose an interest in brass band. But with this coming back up, I know, like, is it, like, is people going to come back and watch it again? So I would basically say, like, the theme park would be down floor because you heard that the Hall of Fame thing posted that be down Universal Studios. You heard that. Excuse me, yeah. you heard that? Yes, so, I heard. Um, yeah. So, yeah, so it would be interesting if they have it down for the butt. Let's, mostly let, let, probably let's, mostly. Let's imagine, since NFC Game Boy brought it up, the WWE theme park for kids, or whatever the hell they're going to call it. Just mm-hmm. really imagine it. What rides will be there? You know, they're probably going to have, like, special guest appearances that Florida Georgia Line guys, the one that looks like Chris Jericho, and, you know, and it's your favorite Flo Rider. I had Mo- Motorhead coming in there mumbling every song. Like, just think about it. There will be amusement park, whatever you call it. What rides will be there? The time driver. Anybody, anybody can take that. Folk will be where <laughs> It in a thing, but what rides would you have at a WWE theme park? Well, the boom drop, the boom drop, the boom drop, <laughs> power <laughs> driver. That's the, if you watch the uh, the Day Day E cartoon movie, the Scooby Doo one, it actually the the storyline is that it, there is a Day Day E theme park, and they have like some of the rides like Kane Inferno ride and uh, they had this one ride with the with the divas and stuff and. It, it was. It really, to me, looked like you know. It, it didn't show too many rides, but I don't think that it would be really successful, even if they did have rides there. I think that what the Day Day should have done or should do is have a Day Day museum, and I don't think it should be in Florida. Or anything. I actually think it should put it in Canada, and I know a lot of people probably you like why. I'm yeah. gonna say why. Yeah. I'm gonna say why Canada is because. It's a place that a lot of great wrestlers come from also. And it's a place where the revenue is a lot higher than the United States. So, you know what I mean, when you get no ticket case. sales and you get people to come in and visit, they have to fly out there or catch the bus, you know, to go to Canada to go see it. That brings a lot of money. And I'm pretty sure somebody who's listening is probably going to steal this idea. So I'm I'm saying that I came up with this shit first, so fuck you. 
But anyway, uh, yeah, <laughs> you know what yeah. I mean? And what you would do is you can have one in Canada, you can have one in the States, and probably have one like in uh, maybe like... Africa? No, like no. maybe like Japan or something. But th- they are museums like, that have WWE stuff in them. And, it, you know, they might have like a ride or two... Like, you can feel the impact from getting, like, a choke slam. You probably, like, you know, it's a ride where a hand is around you and it, like, vibrates your body or a simulator mm-hmm. when you can fall back and, you know, it, you know stuff like that. You don't really have need roller coasters. They can relax anything. your back. Like, anyway, you know, you don't, <laughs> you, need, you don't really need roller coasters or anything because, like, you know, uh, like uh, Shannon and them said, you know, it, it really isn't really for children. I think if it's a museum, it will be a lot more prestigious. It will get a lot of guys our age and older to go and visit because, you know, the sports museums, of course, you know, it, that, that title is is very, very uh, prestigious. So when you hear it, you know, you don't mind spending some money. But when you hear amusement park. You're kind of thinking, oh, well, I don't have my kids, or I don't have children, or I got to mm-hmm. get my nieces and nephews. You got to kind of make an excuse for it. So right. this is the response um, that I gave to the fan. I said, if I was him, I would create a museum, and I would plan it in Canada first, and then do one in the state second, and do one uh, probably in Japan. And each museum is a different one. One could be the day day F era from back in the 80s, when, or when his father was taking old when Vince first started, and then the next museum can be the Attitude Error and the Ruthless Aggression Error and everything. Actually, and the um, next museum can be where yeah. we got today in the future stuff. Yeah. You feel um, me? Instead of having all of them uh, in one big museum. I'm sorry, I, but LSR has been uh, giving us ideas also to pat on your ideas. He also says that uh, England would would also be yeah. a good place to hold a yeah, WWE. I agree. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. The that, can, and, uh, that can be that can be the another cars and the memorabilia that they hold. And oh, my okay. thing is with Canada, if they had a Canadian, I, I agree with NFC Game Boy having the Canadian wing of the Hall of Fame because as far as North America things in WWE, Canada always gets screwed, and just like the Montreal screw job. I think the Canada wing of the Hall of the WWE Museum would be mostly pink because of the hearts. So that's just me. Well, I'm yeah, pretty sure somebody's like, listening. Like they gonna steal my idea. I, I, I like hey, that. I, I like that idea. I, me, me, in my opinion, I wouldn't necessarily separate like an NFT Game Boy idea where you had the attitude, or you would have like WWF Museum at another spot. I would have this have an overall museum with each different. Era represented in each different country, but specialized in that country's area. For instance, I would still have an attitude era exhibit in each, um, you know, in each uh, here in the United States, Canada, the UK. But because it's in the UK, I would add a lot more memorabilia that was significant from WWE in that area. Like you remember SummerSlam '92, you know, uh, nobody used to do the um, those wrestling challenges overseas. And, and I'm gonna disagree with that. And I'm gonna tell yeah. you why I disagree with that. That's a good idea, Tech. But here's the problem with that: when you create the WWE is one entity. When you think of baseball and football and basketball and boxing and all these other sports. You got many, 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 many athletes from many, many, many places all across the country or even the world. When you think of the day day E, the day day E only been around like that pretty much almost 30, 35 years. You know, the day 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 was like three, four WF, when it all ran or something. You feel me? Well, they all won. When, yeah. Well, whatever. But what my point <laughs> is is that if it wasn't for WrestleMania, we wouldn't have what we have today. I just want to say, McMahon, man. That's what Vince McMahon acknowledges. He don't really acknowledge that much what his father done. He acknowledges what, what he done. I just want to uh, say that I really miss the sound. I, I'm not really too fond of the new generation era. To me, it's one of the more weaker eras, but I'm really yeah, fond yeah. of the word World Wrestling Federation. So it just sounds so yeah. cool. I, how Vince McMahon used to always open the show. Ladies and gentlemen, yeah, welcome to the World Wrestling Federation. 
such a great so name. Like it's just, French, the World Wrestling yeah, Federation. Yeah, it, it, it sounded so fight. cool, man. That was a legit name. I, I missed that. I missed it when wrestling companies sounded cool. World Wrestling <laughs> Federation. And the title with the little eagle in the middle. I mean, the symbolism. Of, I'm, I'm not too crazy about the New Generation era, but the symbolism of that era it's to me is, is, yeah. is definitely yeah. the best. And that's why you should have the museum split up in different places. It's business. Because if you have it all in one place, what ha- excuse me, what happens is is that it gets cluttered. What happens is you get a lot of opinions. And people, you got mm-hmm. young people, John Cena fans coming around there when you got uh, 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 fans of, uh, let's say, Bob Backlund. And they might hear them say, well, John Cena, the best wrestler, the best champion in the world. Well, Bob Backlund was one of you know this guy say Bob Backlund was the greatest champion okay. in the world. That, that's a good that's a good idea, and, and I agree with your point. But the question also would be, if we look at other sports, you got Major League Baseball, one area, Cooperstown. You have uh, um, you have Ohio NFL um, Museum, the Hall of Fame. You know NHL. I'm not sure where that's at. Um, NBA. Problem is, if if you take your theory and separate it in these different areas. Hopefully, there will still be enough fans to keep coming to the different museums. If you have one museum, oh. one specific area, you know you'll be the bigger. You'll have a bigger chance of everyone coming to this one. You, you, you don't split it see, off. Okay. This is yeah, business. Yeah, I'm, I'm though. just saying. Hopefully, create, yeah, hopefully, you have to create impulse tech. Think about it this way: if you only go to one of the three museums, you're going to feel like you missed out. So what you're going to do is if somebody says, oh, yeah, I've been to the Canada one, man, you got to go up there and see that. You're going to want to save up your money and go to that one just because you already been to one. So you can tell your friends, oh, yeah, I've been to the Canada one. I'm, now I'm trying to save up money and go to all three of them. And then when you meet somebody who hasn't been to all three of them, you can be the one, the proud one, to come say, oh, yeah, I've been to all three of them. That's human nature. It's called impulse. That's business. They do it all the time. I know that. And this is yeah, why I, I say it would be a great idea because yeah. WWE is a sports entertainment company. It's yeah. not sports in Vince McMahon's eye, uh, and that's why it would do it that way. Now, go ahead. I, I'm sorry. I, 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 know, I know that, too, but like I said, my favorite would be because it's sports entertainment and because it's not, in some people's viewpoint, is a legit sport and because of the way the business isn't really as – as high or booming as it once was, my fear will be is, is will people actually come out to all the different ones, you know, as successful as if it was one. That that will be my only fear. I like your idea, too. but um, I be believe it will. It's hopefully. Um, I believe if, if he starts from the 80s and work his way up, I believe he will. If he start from now and work his way back, I don't think so. Yeah, you got to But have, if, he, um, if he start his first museum... From the eighties or all the way before I say I say stop around like ninety maybe ninety four, you know what I mean, and stop there, then yeah. You know what I mean? I think mm-hmm. he can do something with that. Well, it's um now, now But thank you Shin's for answering point, the question though. <laughs> yeah. The point, you said, Okay, if there's a Canadian that there's the Canan a Canada there's a, the Canadian museum <laughs> It will all be pink. Canada, whoa, I, I pink wouldn't too. make. I, I wouldn't make the. the you got people have to re, have to remember the, the Hearts are the most famous Canadians in WWE. But yet there were other Canadians that weren't Hearts that had a big influence in WWE as well. So would you make the whole museum pink because of the Hearts, or would you make a only? Would you make a certain section for just the Hearts? No, I think you got Dino Bravo. Section. Yeah, you got Dino Bravo. You got Rick Martel. Yeah. You know, you got a whole it, bunch of other Canadians. And when did he come out? Uh, Daniel Bravo was in the '80s, but he got killed. He got murdered. And Rick I Martel, know. Like I mean, Rick Martel. Okay, uh, but I just say Bailey, I said from the '80s all the way to like '94, right? But but you have mm-hmm. you have Iron Mike Sharp also, who was a perennial Iron jobber. Yeah. The Rigos. Yeah, Iron Mike Sharp. You got the Rigos, the flying tea bags. Which yeah, we'll leave that alone. Well, um, like I said, Paul, this is yeah. just this is just. I don't want to go too much into it because I'm looking at the clock. This is just no, an idea that that a fan had it's, brought to me. 
I wanted to bring out to the fans and to the panel since I had you all and everything. And um, you know what y'all think, you know, uh, y'all opinions and, and everything. You know, I don't think what? the WWE will have enough funding to do all of this. But oh, you know, I think I think they could. I think uh, so. I, 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 I think they could. It's, it's I don't want them to do it because they're gonna steal my ID and I'm gonna be mad. It's already sold. <laughs> well, we 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 got yeah, shows. We can play. Yeah, we can catch them. God, you're WWE doing I'm trying to make it Oh, my idea. No, it wasn't. That that one echoed too. He just said, "I'm tired of making everybody rich," and it just echoed like nobody was in the room. <laughs> yeah, they already ran off with the idea. I'm talking. People but, been um, ripping off my idea since I was nine. Like, yeah, when I was nine years old, I, I came up with a lot of ideas, and I've seen come to fruition. I used to be afraid of saying things because I systematically used to think someone was spying on me and take my ideas. And So a lot of times I don't oh, really – that's uh, why I think well, when I incorporate myself into business, it does very well because I have my ideals that I have for whatever business I'm in. But that's a personal I had, conversation. I had the idea for Undercover Boss five years ago before the show debuted. I never said anything. Look at it now. Mm. Darn, uh, I darn a, people. I had an idea for Flavor of Love, but they put an ugly dude on the show. You did, Shen? Were you going to be a part of the show? No. I just had an idea to produce it. <laughs> Flavor of Shen. I'm not, I, I, don't, I, don't look like a, I don't look like a struck match like Flavor Flav does. Oh, oh, which is like uh, walk up, walk up, man. But real quick, back, back to the museum part. Good, good discussion, <laughs> NC Game Boy. Good that we okay. all have our own opinions and views. Now, this would be the quick question, too. Out of all, out of wrestling in general, WWE, WCW, WCW, uh, AWA, out of all the wrestling, what memorabilia would you put in the museum? Just pick like one or two. Do you think about wrestling, your whole history of watching wrestling, think of, like, most significant times. What memorabilia would you love to see? Mm. That's that's what NSC. Um, that's kind of, that's, that's kind of tricky. Uh, ooh. Well, of course, I think Jake the Snake will probably have to donate, you know, I you know probably one of his sneaks or something. Um, Damien's skin. They probably have. I'm, I know the original Damien is, is gone, but I mean you know they probably have a, a sneak there that you know fans can look at and whatever they can say he's the the, the, the child of the child of of Damien, the original Damien or something. Um, you know maybe like uh, I guess the boot uh, not the boot the um the mask that um. Ultimate Warrior and um, Papa Shango, when you know they had that feud when I was young, oh, yeah. and I remember oh, wow. saying that. Um, what? Maybe the the uh, you know when Papa Shango did his little thing to Ultimate Warrior and made him bleed, and you know from his head and all that stuff. They thought that he mm-hmm. was he was good, you know. Um, That's cool. Okay. Yeah, Shut or up, a picture man. of. Uh, a picture of Jerry King Law smacking um, Andy Kaufman on the Letterman Show. Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. That. that was groundbreaking classic. back in the eighties. Yeah, know classic. Um, shout out yeah. to Nigel who just said uh, special ring props and um, legendary belts would be something he would like. Uh, real quick, Saltine, what memory Billy would you like oh, to see? I would like to see basically like all the face paint for all the wrestlers, like you know, on the mannequin, but. I know the Raz is not there, but you know they can face paint all the um yeah. Raz that right. wool wool paint. Um, what else? That's a good idea. Like all the um all the different belts, um the T-shirt line, basically the merchandise line of all the Raz they had. Basically, I know that's <laughs> going to take like a mile. <laughs> oh, um, hmm. okay. And maybe a, a toy, maybe the toy line of each of the Raz. Because I like Notice collecting anybody, toys and everything. Salt, no, say anybody. Salty doesn't say wrestlers. He says wrestlers. 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 <laughs> <laughs> uh, Tove. <laughs> it's uh, Tove. I mainly like to see stuff from uh, 
props from the Attitude Era, like uh, the first can, Stone Cold, drunk out of the first beer can, all the different <laughs> numerous shirts and jackets the Rock wore and sunglasses, uh, the different types of... Uh, uh, the, the, the different types of motorcycles that Undertaker wore in his American badass phase. Did he um, wear them or did he ride them? He wear them? <laughs> well, I'm sorry. He wrote yeah, those. Uh, maybe the original hardcore title, if you can find it. That one's really hard to find for some reason. It's probably somewhere in WWE storage. <laughs> oh, you got to do track a track of belt. Oh, you got to do track of belt. It's a hardcore group of people. Uh, shouldn't believe uh, I'm more of a I'm more of a championship belt guy. Number one, the Andre the Giant World Heavyweight Championship that was never released. Um, that and the the Rock's Brahma Bull belt that's been featured on many video games, along with uh, the WWF World Heavyweight Title that Mr. Perfect uh, had smashed in 1990 that uh, nobody really talks about, including the title. That, um, I talked to Afrocentric Queen that she never thought it uh, existed. One was the uh, WWWF Martial Arts Heavyweight Championship, along what? with the yeah, it, it actually existed. Oh, yeah, I forgot about uh, that. Is it, mm-hmm. I forgot about that. Yeah, yeah. Is it true that the belt that Mr. Perfect destroyed that was the hardcore title? They said that wasn't it though, but I actually believe that because it looks um, like the same belt. Just well, not to interrupt me, but um, LSR, uh, just, we just, uh, LSR just, uh, Coffee shop? Jackson said the old WCW oh. Nitro set. Uh, oh, yeah, that'd be cool. Yeah, that would be cool. Too, let's not forget what about, about that non Yeah, let's not forget about that Wildcat. What was that non, that mascot Nitro head that used to jump around when yeah. Nitro started? Remember him? Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Um, yeah. Anybody remember I the would, uh, uh, Canadian Championship? I remember that too. I would. Um, I, I I would I would like I I could I could think real time to for a lot of stuff is um the rock with the pain. belt the rock with the big belt that Barry Windham when he smacked Rick Flair in the head in that boat um that boat missed. If y'all don't know the story about Barry Windham. They had the original big gold belt. I think it was in the early nineties when he hit Ric Flair in the head with it. One of the um, nuts or one of the screws came off. Also, no, I say big gold belt. The no, no, no. This was Ellis He just he just texted the smoke oh, okay. the skull belt. Um, um, actually, uh, Tech, do you remember the, the old? Uh, okay. Also, guys, this is a big one. A lot of people forget. Remember when Hogan beat Iron Sheik when Hulkamania was born? Yep. What belt did Hogan have? He had that real big, ugly green belt. Remember that? It looked like a Hall of Fame belt. Oh, yeah, yeah y'all remember that? What the hell yeah, happened I to know. that belt? That would be a good belt, too. What about uh, what about the, uh, the, uh, re- the quote-unquote replacement WCW title when Flair left and when Lex Luger fought Barry Windham in the cage and they had uh, oh, yeah. Dusty Rhodes' old uh, world title belt, what happened to that one? Yeah, that they, is they true. They barely showed it on TV. Lex Luger um, won the title from Barry Windham and just ran out the ring with Harley Race and hid the belt in, in his uh, side and everything so the camera couldn't get it. I'll get some hate for this, but uh, I didn't mind the, uh, the, uh, the WWE CW silver Looking belt. I actually thought that was a good looking title. That never happened. That was ugly. Anybody like that belt? I thought it was I fine. Did. What belt is this again? I'm sorry. You know the the silver one in the uh, WWE ECW brand. Oh hell no! Nah. That belt was ugly as hell. Ugly. ugly that that belt. belt never happened. It belt never had. Well, I thought the belt um, was fine. I'll take that over the tag team titles. Those belts are horrible. And ugly. I, I would, <laughs> two, two, two things real quick. Two things real quick, and then I'll, I'll have George uh, finish it off with his member, my member, uh, member bill George. yet. Will be one, not the sound pause, but because no, remember fans, I'm an artist also as a musician. Is replicas 
of Rick Rude's tights. Rick Rude, if anybody knows the tights that he wore, the him and Jake the Saint Robert's wife on them, the, all of his artwork on his tights is <laughs> phenomenal. Uh, to this day, oh. they were great. So I would love to have, oh. the, you know, that would be a good prop to have him. Because back in the day, everybody had them born basic color tights for everybody's initial. Yeah. Rick Rude kind of started He was on the first art. that was really innovative with his tights. Right, be innovative mm-hmm. with the artwork. And, you know, Savage and Hogan kind of had the tassels mm-hmm. and stuff. Also, when everybody loved to see, to everybody re- reenact the greater power, that robe, it was me, Austin, you know, <laughs> would it be something for everybody, <laughs> like a little, little exhibition, uh, 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 actually, that everybody wearing the greater power robe. Because at the end of the um, day, hmm. y'all won't want to wear the, you know, y'all won't want to be the greater power one day, like a little exhibit I'm, in this game, boy? I'm trying to figure out who's George. Um, uh, hmm. I don't know. I'm 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 reading a, a text also from Afrocentric Queen. She said about when uh Medusa, aka Alondra Blaze, put the uh woman's title in the trash on at Nitro. Yeah, get that trash can on there. Medusa the trash can, can on there. <laughs> Medusa can funny. still get it and I'm just gonna put that out there. Wow, really <laughs> Tope? Yeah. Tope is turning to uh Tyrone. Hey, she was a very classy. She was a very classy lady. She came from an era where you could be sexy without dressing half naked and all the other stuff. So uh, she, uh, she can go in the ring. <laughs> she was. Yep. She was the first. Paul, she was the only Paul Heyman girl. Yep. Yeah. Well, so I'm sure Paul Heyman will, so, will change that soon. But yeah. yeah. So with so so with that, everybody, of course, cool five minutes left in the show. Again, we will be ending it. We want to thank David Hero, our good old buddy. Thank you so for getting David Hero with us. Hey, a good old super friend joining us, talking about the Wednesday Night Wars. Like they thank Toph, Sartine, Sensational yeah. Wishing Blade, NSC. For everybody calling in, thank you for Afro Century Queen. Everybody that's listening, shout out to our girls, B. Mel. Love you much, uh, Princess Peach, Southern Belle. Everybody else. Tell us all who's listening and can't talk or can only text. So with that being said, of course, we're going to leave out in traditional form of random shout-outs. So, team, any random shout-outs? Uh, shout-out to all the wrestling fans, the real wrestling fans. Shout-out to AJ. Shout-out to Moose. Congratulations to Ring of Honor, everybody, all over the world. Thank you. All right. So. Yeah, uh, shout-outs to... Uh, all the talents on Lucha Underground that have the job to Mia Mortez so they can have Katrina lick their face. That is a job or job I wouldn't mind having nice. today. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> NFC King Boy, random shout out. A uh, shout out to all the fans and everyone listening. And uh, I'm glad that we uh, enjoyed this segment. And uh, Day E, if you're going to steal my idea, at least somebody give me a phone call or an email and say thank you. Yeah, you know, I don't even care for the money. Just, just a thank you. But that's pretty much it. Uh, real quick, random shout out to Anita Baker, who's apparently having a Twitter war beef. Um, um it pretty much lets you know when well, your career pretty much is over and you have nothing else better to do. You're not singing songs with this head beef for people on Twitter. Uh, yeah. Also, okay. random shout out to people. If you, if you have church dinners. So you have any family function. If you're going to promote that you have a crab cake, please be aware that when you use claw meat in a crab cake, please make sure you thoroughly clean the crab cake. You only want to bite to a crab cake and get that claw and scratch up your gum. You know, I have shut up for dog. My last dog. Um, so, I, I'm... One one last note. I'm trying to uh, currently. I'm trying to drop the sensational for my name. Uh, I have been going over it through the past couple of weeks. So if people don't hear sensational with it, don't be bothered. It's just a transition that I'm going through. And also uh, shout out to uh, NSC Game Boy who uh, I was trading barbs with when it came to hip hop diss tracks. Uh, especially with the gas face with a early incarnation who, the rapper's name is Zev Love X who is currently MF Doom. Yeah, I didn't know that. Real quick. So, real quick. Yeah, man. 
my last one, uh, shout outs to Sonny doing porn, uh, 20 years too late. And since you're in the Hall of Fame, uh, you have no excuse, Triple H. It's your move, Stephanie. Exactly. <laughs> All right. uh, LSR, say shout out to the to LSR, baby. Shout out to Lena. Love you much. And with that being said, oh, thank you again man. next week. Under the Mat Radio will be live, live, live next Tuesday with one 105.7 own Jeremy Khan, who is a great guy, fan of wrestling or what have you, that is here in Baltimore. There's national radio for CBS. And also join us will be representative of Global Force Wrestling, formerly known as Chris Master. Chris Medelsky will be joining us. So on that note, fans, love you much. And it's the Game Boy Toast, Shin Blade, and Saltine, all signing off. Oh. Everybody still there? Yeah. Uh, yeah. All right. I just realized no, whatever we yeah. be playing the background plays like hella loud when the um show goes off air. You just now knowing that? I, I no, I, I have for some reason that was hella loud. I never changed the volume settings at all. Oh. <laughs> all right, yeah, good job, guys. Let's talk to you. On. I'm I sorry. You again. I said I got snubbed again. How? I just you were you kept throwing the randomness. I ain't even shout out nobody. I was like, God damn. Oh my bad, man. My my bad. I'll start the show out Tuesday with you doing your um shout out. No, I mean uh, it's cool though. I just had a few things uh, I had on my mind, especially I don't know if you've seen that Larry Holmes video that I sent you. Oh yeah, I'm gonna um I'm gonna watch that now. Matter of fact. Random shout out to Kermit D. Whatever was in it, it was one and gone. Yeah, it definitely was. Shout out to uh, Saltine's uh, new girlfriend. Oh, yeah. Who had no bra? (laughs) Why are you looking? Dude, nah, that dress, it was apparent. Everybody, you could clearly see she didn't have a bra on. Yeah, but you got bait mail right there next to you. Everybody, she noticed it before me. I mean, not be funny. Everybody noticed it. She didn't have. She didn't. Hey, let me take this call, man. I I hit you up on uh, chat. All right. Okay. All right. Bye.